Hi, Kristen here with my wine from Fresh Juice. Once I started this, I stirred it every day for the first four days. Then I left it alone for four more days. The last two days I've been monitoring it for the specific gravity with a hydrometer and today my wine is at 1.000, which is about right here on my hydrometer. I like a dry wines with no residual sugar left in it, so I waited until it was at 1.00 on the hydrometer. This means that there's very little sugar remaining in the wine, and when I transfer it, the remaining sugar will ferment out. If you would like sweet wine, you will want to transfer it when your hydrometer reads 1.010, which leaves some sugar remaining. Furthermore, you will need to monitor it carefully and stabilize it at around 1.006 to ensure it does not ferment all of the sugar out. Most sweet wines have a specific gravity of 1.002 to 1.004. For this next step, you will need a carboy, glass or plastic, whatever your personal preference is. You also need an auto siphon with tubing and sanitizer in a container as well as in a spray bottle is really handy to have. You have to have sanitizer either way. Make sure you also have stoppers for your carboy. If you only have a five gallon carboy, it is perfectly acceptable to transfer your wine into a five gallon carboy, but you will also need another one gallon to transfer any leftover in the pail. To transfer your wine into a carboy, the first thing you need to do is sanitize the auto siphon and the carboy. So just going to siphon some sanitizer into the carboy. That should be plenty. And then I'm just going to tuck the tubing in there. Give the carboy a good swish. and dump it out. Then I'm just going to take the lid off. For the sake of this video, I already loosened the lid. Grab my auto siphon. I need to spray the outside of the siphon off. Place the tube into the carboy. It's okay if a little sanitizer gets in the carboy, it's not going to hurt anything. And then I'm going to gently place it into the wine, and instead of moving the tube so that it stays in the carboy, I'm going to move the large portion and then just let it go. I don't want to bring this all the way to the bottom of the pail because there's sediment on the bottom of the pail. So I'm going to have to just hold it up off the bottom and get it siphoned and I'll be back in about five minutes. I have finished transferring my wine into my carboy and there is very little airspace between the wine and the bottom of the stopper. I have also filled the airlock with sanitizer and I just want to show you the pail with the sediment in the bottom. Make sure that when you transfer your wine, you do not put your auto siphon all the way to the bottom and leave that sediment behind. Hi, I'm getting ready to oak the wine that I made from fresh juice, but first I gathered all of the equipment and ingredients that I'm going to need. For this step, you will need a half gallon and or one gallon jug and a five gallon carboy both with stoppers and airlocks a wine thief with a test jar and a hydrometer a pail with a stir paddle or stir stick an auto siphon with tubing of course sanitizer i like to have it in a jug as well as a spray bottle a measuring cup 
And the ingredients that you will need are oak of your choice, potassium metabisulfate with a one quarter teaspoon, and potassium sorbate with a one teaspoon. Another item that's helpful to have but not necessary is a mixture for degassing the wine. And these are the things that you will need to oak your wine. I transferred this wine made from fresh juice into this carboy about a month ago. And as you can see, there's a good amount of sediment on the bottom. So I'm getting ready to oak it and stabilize it. So I'm going to transfer this off into a pail because it will make adding the ingredients to it much easier. However, before I do that, I do need to sanitize my pail. So I'm going to sanitize the auto siphon and the pail at the same time by just siphoning some sanitizer through the auto siphon. And then I'm going to swish the sanitizer around in the pail. I just like to use a paper towel to make sure that I get all of the surfaces uh, clean and sanitized. Well, it was already clean before I started, but I want to make sure that I sanitize everything. And then I'm just going to dump it out. Do not need to rinse the sanitizer. If you rinse it, you're, you're rinsing away the sanitizing properties of it. The small amount that is left in the bucket will not affect your wine. So next, my wine is filled all the way up to the top of my carboy, which is how it should be because you don't want any air getting into your wine and affecting that. So if I just go put my auto siphon in there like that, it's going to um, overflow. So I'm going to use the wine thief to take a small amount out first. Of course, sanitizing it as I go along. And I want to test my wine to see where its specific gravity is. So I'm just going to use this test jar. The test jar was filled with sanitizer. I'll just gently put the hydrometer in there. And then I'm just going to slowly lower the wine thief in. I'm going to go down as far as I can without overflowing. Pull it out. And pour it into my test jar. I'll put that aside for later use. Now I'm going to transfer it into my pail for ease of mixing and possibly degassing if it needs it. Of course, before I do that, I need to sanitize the outside of this. I've sanitized the inside, but not the outside tubes. This tube is a little bit too short for this transfer. So hopefully I'll be able to do that. There we go. And instead of moving the inside, I'm going to move the outside to get it going. All right, and now I'm going to just transfer this all into the pail, and I will be back when it's done. I have transferred my wine into the pail from the carboy. And as you can see, there was a really good amount of sediment on the bottom of it, so I was sure to leave that behind. Next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add my stabilizers. I'm going to add three teaspoons of potassium sorbate. I like to mix this in a measuring cup before, in a little bit of water before adding it to the wine, just to make sure that it gets dissolved and um, thoroughly mixed. So three teaspoons of the sorbate. The sorbate is a stabilizer and it helps to ensure that your wine does not um, re-ferment once you bottle it. 
Also, if you're going to sweeten your wine or back sweeten your wine, this will ensure that the yeast does not get um, re-inoculated and will not ferment again, causing some bottle bombs. Then the next thing I'm going to add is a quarter of a teaspoon of potassium metabisulfate. Just a quarter of a teaspoon for this whole batch. This helps preserve the color and the flavor and reduce any oxygen exposure, um, problems with oxygen exposure in the wine. So just going to mix it up. I'm not worrying about sanitizing this because potassium metabisulfate is a sanitizer and so just by mixing this in here it's going to sanitize the measuring cup. So just going to dump that in, give it a quick stir and spray. First spray my paddle off, of course. Give it a quick stir. The next thing I need to do is I need to decide if I'm going to degas. As you can see when I stirred this, it started getting a little bit fizzy. So that right there tells me that I, I need to degas. And another way to tell if you need to degas, and this is why I put it in the test jar as well, is you can taste it and just see if it's a little spritzy on your tongue. And if it's spritzy, you do want to degas. So I'm going to give it a little taste. I'm pretty sure it is, but. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a fizz to it. So I'm going to um, degas it using the mixture to get it all. If you do not degas it properly, it will not clear properly. Um, and it'll also taste fizzy in your bottles and it's not fizzy in a good way like champagne. So be sure you do degas at this stage. Um, the other thing that I did while um, the wine was transferring, I had somebody help me and we boiled the oak chips. So I'm going to um, dump the oak chips out and let them strain. Then I'm going to take my mixture and do the degassing. So of course sanitize the mixture. And this is why I do it in a pail because then I have that extra space because this is going to foam up. And I'll just start mixing. I'm going to go one way for a little bit and then switch directions to the other way. You don't want to go all in one direction because you don't want to get a whirlpool which is going to bring more oxygen down into the wine. The goal of this is to remove the carbon dioxide from the wine while not bringing more oxygen into it. So I'm just going to do this. Going to probably degas for about four minutes and I'm going to add the oak to my carboy and I'll be back. I just finished degassing my wine and I've had to lift it up to a higher level because I'm going to have to siphon it into a carboy. I like using pails that tell you how much um, fluid is in there because I know that in this pail there's roughly five and a half gallons. And that tells me that I need to use my half gallon um, growler and a five gallon carboy to transfer my wine because I don't want any headspace in the carboy. So I've already, um, for the sake of this video, I put the oak chips into the five gallon carboy. I'm not going to worry about any oak in the little one um, because it's such a small amount. And I've also sanitized the carboy as well because you've seen me do that. If you've watched my other videos, you've seen me do it a hundred times. But I am still going to sanitize the outside of it. And because there's no sediment in this pail, I can just put the auto siphon right down to the bottom of the pail. And then I still, it does float. And then I need to um, sanitize the outside of it. Put it in my carboy. I used a funnel to get this, the chips in and the, there's a few little chips around the lip and at, once I get the auto siphon going, I'm just going to lift it up and hopefully not spill it, but get the um, chips down to the bottom of the carboy. There we go. And the reason that I want to add the chips first is because if I add them later, 
they, I don't know what my level of my wine will be and I risk the possibility of overflowing my carboy. Um, plus the chips are kind of messy and it's kind of a pain to get them in there. So it's just easier to do it before you add your wine. So now I'm just going to let this transfer on top and I'll be back in about five minutes. I finished transferring the wine into the carboy and now I'm going to let it sit for a month on the oak and then I will be back. I did end up having a little more than a half a gallon of wine so I transferred it into this one gallon container first but I'm going to I'm not happy with this headspace it's too much so I'm going to transfer half a gallon into the smaller growler and then whatever's left over I'm just gonna put in my fridge and use for cooking wine um, so I'll see you in about a month with the next stage of making wine from fresh juice